this computer okay so i'm just adding one more interface to this i'll tell you what is the topic today we're going to do zero one and two is already being used so i'm adding three now here also i'm adding one more interface that is the fourth one the fifth one Let it start. I mean. So today's topic is redundant interface. So short topic. Redundant interface means you see this ASA firewall is having multiple interfaces. So I have just connected one more interface to the switch. That means there are two two interface on both side. That is on inside, on outside. and dmz also is carrying two interface now redundant means i am talking about redundancy of the interface i am not talking about failover i am not talking about failover of an asa i am not talking about uh, redundancy of an asa i am talking about redundancy of an interface so in this scenario if you see e0 is connected to the switch and e3 is also connected to the switch e1 is connected so now you see uh, i have already configured uh, e0 and e1 and e2 with respective ip addresses okay so now i can't configure two interface with the same ip addresses and what is the motto why i want redundant interface i want if my primary interface goes down that is if my e0 goes down all my traffic will get held up so i want e3 should surf immediately once the e0 goes down and same way if e2 goes down i want e5 to take up immediately and if e1 goes down e4 should take up immediately okay but already i have assigned the ip addresses to e0 e1 and e2 i cannot assign the same ip addresses to e3 e4 and e5 it will be a conflict so i need to remove 
these IP addresses and the name if also. Same way, I'll go on E1 and I'll remove the name if. I'm going to remove the IP address and I'm going to remove the security level also. E2, I'm going to say no IP address, no security level and no IP address. So when I say show route, everything is gone. So I'll open the sheet. I hope you all received the uh, the notepad and the recording because I uploaded that on WhatsApp that day. So you are already, once I finish the lab, I always give you the commands. I know you already have the diagram for that. Now in this case, I removed the IP addresses from the E0. I removed the IP addresses from E2 also. And I also removed the IP address from E1. That means removed E0, E1 and E2. I'm going to form one redundant interface number one, where I'm going to club E0 and E3. According to our diagram, it is E0 and E3 that is part of redundant interface. And the name if of both this interface will be same that is outside. And the security level of both these interfaces is also same and the IP address is also same. So I am going to say, now you can see there, there is no IP addresses on any of these interfaces. So I'm going to go on interface and say redundant. How many interfaces you can make redundant one to eight. So I'm just telling one at present. And then I say what member interface E0. See, when I say member interface E0, he's telling me, boss, I don't want any security level and IP address on that interface. And I myself cleared. So if you don't clear, he will clear. When you make him the member of redundant interface, if you don't clear, he is going to clear the IP address on this. Okay. He's telling boss, I have to clear this because I cannot keep the IP address on physical interface also and redundant interface number one also. If you're bringing E0 and E3 part of redundant interface, I'll clear the configuration from this interface. Good. The IP address that you have decided, the name if you have decided, And then no shirt. So when I say show interface IP brief, you can see instead of having, okay. But remember when I added E3, I never shut it. Uh, I, I have to physically go there and you have to say that no shirt. So now you see E0 and E3 both are up. And they are part of redundant interface one. I'm going to add one more redundant interface two. And I'm going to make interface E1 and E4 IP address I have decided already. So when I say show interface IP brief, 
once again i have to go here and bring this interface up interface redundant three member interface e2 and e5 no shut ip address Ten dot one dot one dot one two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Name if DMC. Okay, so already interface. No IP address. No name if. No security level. by mistake i left it i think member interface e2 member interface e5 ip address 10.1.1.1255.255.255.0 no shut Name of DMZ. Security level fifty. So when I say show interface IP brief, I created three redundant interface. One for outside, one for inside. When I say show route, now again I have to do what route outside zero zero twelve dot one dot one dot two. show interface status show config t interface range e0 by 0 to shut no shut Many times it happens. Show route. Ping twenty one dot one dot two. Let me check the Okay. 
शो आई पी आई एन टी ब्रीफ शो राउट साइडेड मिस्टेक हैव टू से राउट आउटसाइड okay now when i say show interface redundant one you can see the interface redundant one outside is up and the line protocol is up and you can see there are member interface e0 and e3 so when i go on interface e0 he is telling you added e0 to e1 e0 to as an active member of redundant interface 1 okay and this is the active member of redundant 1 so the keyword act Active member of redundant one is very important for whom E zero. When I say E three, is telling that this is also member of redundant one, but he is not active. He is a standby member of. That is why you see when I go here. See now, ninety one packets output, eighty four packets input, zero packets output. Zero packet or twenty one twenty seven okay, tick. So now I'll go. Just remember this information. When I try to send something to this guy, five packets, and when I say, you can see ninety one plus five, ninety six. Eighty-four plus five, eighty-nine packet. That means, as an active member of redundant interface, this fellow is processing, and as a passive member, that is a standby, he is not doing anything. Twenty-seven packet is still intact. Okay. So, who is acting as an active member? who is now active member e0 of redundant one same way if you go to show interface e1 e he is also active member if you go to e4 is a standby member of redundant two same way when i go to e2 is an act standby and when i go to e5 now see if you see when i was doing this configuration the question arises who is going to act as a active member and who is going to act as a standby member the load is very heavy on this so what we'll do we'll shut down this units so what i'll do i'll just find it out 
why and who became active first and why so if you see if i start my epic pen So when I club this, when I club this and when I club this, this has redundant one, this has redundant two, and this has redundant three. When I added the interface, so whoever comes first becomes what? Active and whoever comes second becomes what? standby so there was some issue with e2 i don't know i didn't remove the configuration you must have seen when i was configuring so I, when i because i didn't remove the configuration from the e2 he didn't took it as a member of the so e5 was taken as the member of the redundant interface 3 so he became what He became the active member. So when I say show interface E2 is standby. Okay. Doesn't make any difference because see, we are doing what? Please don't misunderstand this as ether channel. It's not ether channel. This is not like ether channel. Ether channel is different. We'll do that topic also. Ether channel. Bundling. We are not, here we are not increasing the throughput. Here we are redund, we are making redundancy of the interface. So if you are making redundancy of the interface, that means we are adding two interface and at a time only one will work. Okay, so I showed you practically how the things are working now. And it's very going very slow. Wait, huh? One minute. So let's see now when I go here, when I say show interface E zero. This guy is an active member sending traffic to all the it's an active member sending traffic to all the users. So now I'm sending or I am trying to receive 
some traffic from outside that is from R7. Already we have configured R7 to send traffic to server. So when I go here and try to ping the server, I think last time we did some policy allowing, okay, so need to check what is the policy. So we said out ICMP, I think we have not applied it. So I need to just check it out. When I say show run access group, there is no access group applied. So I need to go here and say show access, access group. We created object group also. No, I don't know. I think I forgot to save object group. So it's gone. Okay. Anyway, so when I say show run access list, you can see we have access list which is permitting ICMP for 172, 16, 10.2, okay, only for eco reply. So we need to allow one out ICMP permit. First, we need to check the line because you see there is a deny IP any any so I need to say access list out ICMP line 5 I am adding one line which will permit ICMP to host 172.16.10.2 to come on server to for echo request. When I go here, access group and say out ICMP in interface outside. So when I say show run access group, you can see access list is applied. So now I try to ping from host to the server pinging. So what I'll say, I'll say repeat 1000. Now I'll go here and say show interface E0. Show interface E0, the packets are The packets are increasing. Can you see? Okay, finish. So now what I'll do, I'll make it more and I will shut down this interface. So when I go to E3, I can see now he has become the active member of redundancy. Uh, packet is going on. What I did? What is the practical I did? I shut down E0. Why? Who was serving? According to the diagram, who was serving? E0. But now E0 is gone. This fellow is gone. So this fellow is still active. And you can see the packets are increasing. Earlier it was 410 packets. Now it's 2550, 3098 packets. And you can see now he has become the active member. When you see the pink 
you can't see a, you can see one single drop was there if you see in the fourth line right hand side you can see one single drop so one single drop doesn't matter so now if you see show interface ip brief out of the redundant interface of e0 is e3 is now up member e3 is now active why because we lost e0 now what happens the question arises is what happens if this fellow comes back this fellow is already active now see once again this fellow was active this fellow was standby so when this fellow became or when this interface no sorry when this interface goes down this interface becomes active what about the status of e0 now so i go here and say e0 the status of e0 is it's in standby mode so what happens if e0 comes back what happens if e0 comes back e0 is still in standby mode only there is no preemption what is preemption preemption means when i was binding or when i was including member interfaces in redundant one i took e0 the first one and then i took e3 the second one so he became active and he became standby but if e0 goes down he becomes standby and he becomes active but when this fellow comes back he still remains standby and he still remains active doesn't make any sense why you want e0 to become active both the interfaces are of same caliber both the interfaces are having same speed so let now e3 act as an active interface but you say no no i'm i want e0 to become active so do one thing you shut down this interface okay and when you see show interface e0 now he has become active and what about this e3 he has become standby you bring it back by saying no shut so you see e0 has already become what active uh, one question hello yes yes shiva kumar shiva kumar no yes yes shiva yes. you can call me shiva okay shiva uh, this uh, mac address is changing now here which mac address the active member mac address this uh, the last four digit see, this see four. basically firewalls is having lot of dummy mac addresses okay apart from fixed mac addresses okay there is a good question that you asked very good because question because the switch because the return traffic the switch yeah should know that mac address right actually whenever i want to send the traffic to my gateway i have to arc that mac address with me right yes 
that means if r3 wants to send traffic through e1 mm -hmm. is r table will carry the mac address of e1 yes so he is sending the traffic like that and suddenly something happens yes what will happen this fellow will become the active interface yes but this is a physical interface e4 and this is a physical interface e1 and their mac addresses are different physical interface yes. is mac address so it is necessary that r3 should immediately switch over from e1 to e4 but that is possible only if he carries the mac address of e4 but he won't carry the mac address of e4 because he is already having mac address of e1 in his arc table and remember one thing arc table never flushes immediately it takes some time to flush and get the new mac right yes so it won't be immediately switch over of e1 to e4 by r3 because he is already storing the mac address of e1 with him so it will be difficult for him to store again the mac address of e4 with him immediately so firewall knows about this and firewall do one thing in redundant interface they they don't use physical address instead of that they are using what the dummy mac address that is virtual mac addresses so virtual mac addresses again work same like hsrp and vrrp what is the fundamental of hsrp and vrrp that they won't be getting the mac address of the physical interface that means what is the mac address of the physical interface of e0 okay so like for example if i try to ping from here my gateway 192.168.10.1 and when i say show r you can see i got the mac address 001 okay now if i go here and say show interface e1 it is 5000008001 okay now when i go here and say show interface e 4 it is carrying 5000008004 and when i show an redundant interface what is the mac address 5000080000 sorry redundant i think 2 redundant interface to carry the member e1 yes so the redundant interface mac address is what 50008 so they should store 5000 can you see one redundant interface mac address is what 50008001 and what is the mac address of show interface e1 that is also 1 4 initially they they will be getting the virtual mac address i don't know why it's storing like that let's see so when i try to ping 172.16 10.2 repeat okay mm. 
this is the same logic of that uh, failover right the failover yes yes the primary mac address will be moving to the secondary right one yes same, same logic same logic one drop he got so when i go here and see show interface e4 see e4 got e4 e4 has to be like e4 is also having 001 can you see if you see show interface e uh, sorry redundant to showing 5000008001 that means the whole redundant interface carry a virtual mac address of 001 so when they when they you know when they make a arp table they'll always keep the virtual mac address of the redundant interface and not the interface physical interface mac address so that becomes easy for them you know because they don't have to change their mac arp table okay their request will come for 001 and 001 will be again going let's see on the switch side that will be more easy way of finding so this is my lan switch huh? i'll just name it config t host name lan switch so when i say show mac address table dynamic i can see 5008001 getting registered on interface e0 by 1 now e0 by 1 is connected to e4 and e0 by 0 is shut down okay so once again what we'll do will bring that interface up so show interface ip brief once again we'll make interface e4 shut no shut so when i say show interface e1 he has become active member okay so when e1 has become active member we'll go to that lan switch and see where is this mac address can you see e0 by 1 was having this mac address now e0 by 0 is having that mac address. that means it is the mac address same okay virtual mac address it's like a you know, virtual mac address our table never flushes the mac address earlier the mac address was registered with e0 by 0 when this goes down the same mac address get registered with e0 by 0 so when i now active interface is e1 so again you see what i'll do once again i go on asa and shut down that interface e1 now you see immediately the mac address must have gone to e1 see so it is same fundamental what you have studied in hsrp and vrrp virtual mac address and it get earlier it was registered on e0 by 0 as soon as the interface went down active interface it got re registered on e0 by 1 so no one has to change their arp table because host cannot immediately change their arp table how they will come to know what happened on asa who's going to tell them redundant interface feature is on asa and not on switch or not on host so it is the firewall's responsibility that he should immediately give the virtual mac address to the lan switch that this is the mac address of this interface now i hope you understood what i said clear shiva yes shiva? yes yes this oh. is clear yeah i will forward you this uh, sheet i hope all of you understood what is redundant interface
नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज विलेंस ए से ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड विलेंस so next topic is virtual lan now you all must be aware that why we have virtual lans in the switch network many time it is like you know you might have server which are either private and public now you don't have multiple interfaces to create to create multiple set of servers in different zones like for example no doubt you have two interface here but assume you don't have multiple interfaces you have you have only one interface can you want to make multiple demilitarized zone for multiple servers like i thought of doing private server and public server so i'll just move on this for some time so we have now two sets of server one is private server and one is public server now we can't keep private server and public servers together so we are going to create virtual lans and we are going to allow different vlan traffic to move on differently from asa we want to separate them normally what is the definition of vlan virtual lan it was designed to break the single broadcast domain into multiple broadcast domain security okay troubleshooting was very easy if you create multiple vlans all those features were attached with vlans so now we here also in our case we want to separate our demilitarized zone into two one for private server and one for public servers okay so we have to change the subnet also so what we'll do we'll change the subnet here ten dot ten dot one dot three dot one Or ten dot one dot thirty dot one, because this belongs to VLAN thirty. See. and this is server of vlan 30 edit 10. dot 40. dot dot 
this is the server for vlan 40 So you have 30, you have 40. You have VLAN 30, you have VLAN 40. Server VLAN 30 belongs to VLAN 30. Server VLAN 40 belongs to VLAN 40. So what I have to do? I have to go on switch. Let's close all the other switches and we'll keep only this switch on. If I give the host name for this switch, this is demilitarized switch. So when I say show interface status, I can see all the interfaces are connected and working fine. So I need to create two VLANs, VLAN 30 name, private server. And I need to create VLAN 40 name public server. So when I say show VLAN, I can see there are two sets of VLANs, private and public. E0 by 2 belongs to private and E0 by 3 belongs to public. So I go here and say E0 by 2 switch port host switch port access VLAN 30. You can see E0 by 2 is the member of private now two VLAN traffic is going to go from the single link so this link has to be what trunk E0 by 0 and E0 by 1 has to be trunk. Don't forget that. Interface range E0 by 0 dash switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q switch port mode trunk. So the frame tagging method we use is dot one q. So when I say switch interface trunk, I can see it e zero by zero and e zero by one is trunk. And 
this trunk interface can allow 30 and 40. So my switching part is over now. I added VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 as a VLAN. I made E0 by 2 and E0 by 3 member of respective VLANs. I made E0 by 0 and E0 by trunk. Now please try to understand when you are doing trunking between two switch, you have to do it on both the side. Suppose you are doing trunk between switch 1 and switch 2, you go on both the side and say switch port mode trunk, switch port mode trunk on both the side. So they become trunk or you can go on one side and say dynamic desirable on the other side you can say dynamic auto or trunk or dynamic desirable anything but you have to configure except if DTP is configured and both the switches are in desirable then you don't have to configure. But in case of ASA there is no trunk configuration but yes trunk is recognized by ASA also. That is why you can see the trunk is negotiated. That is why you can see when you said show interface trunk, it is showing you that you did trunking between E0 by 0 and E0 by 1 and it is on now. Okay. Now you go here. Let's make it no shut. Show interface IP brief. Now see, if you want to create VLAN on ASA or you want the single interface to be clubbed as sub interface. Sub interface always should have what? It's like router on a stick. You know router on a stick. Okay. In router on a stick what happens? You leave the physical interface and you create the sub interface. So if you are using E2. For VLAN 30 and VLAN 40, you have to create sub interface for this. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just remove this redundant configuration to make it simple. I will just configure E2, no IP address, no shut, no name if. I configure, I can keep for uh, E0 written in a, so I will just make I go to E2, so 
सो राउट लेट से कनेक्टिविटी फर्स्ट पिंगिंग ओके इंटरफेस ई टू डॉट थर्टी सब इंटरफेस IP address ten dot one dot thirty dot one two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Actually, we could have configured this as thirty dot two. I did a mistake because this is the IP address of the server, and the gateway is ten dot one dot thirty dot one. सेम वे गेट वे इज टेन डॉट वन डॉट फोर्टी डॉट वन एंड दिस हैज टू बी फोर्टी डॉट टू नो शर्ट नो नीड name if private servers see now when i do name if it is telling me that you need to first enable vlan on a port see always remember whenever you are creating sub interface it is mandatory that you apply vlan to that sub interface then only it will come up so what i did i enabled vlan first and then i now you see the security level i have to give it 50 so when i say show route i can see it's created show interface ip brief now i go on e2 and i create sub interface ip address before ip addresses it's mandatory that you give the vlan that is the best practice public security level 50 now you see i in when i was telling you that same security level is allowed now both the servers if you want communication should work between both the servers public and well, as well as private then you keep the security level same if you don't want that private servers and public servers should communicate with each other you can change the security level but whenever you remember you are doing this you have to give what a command to make this possible let's see first we will not give the command show interface ip brief oh i gave the ip address wrong the ip address will be 10.1.40.1 Two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. So I interface IP brief. So you see now I created. Okay, same way I want. 
टेन आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट टू विलेंस ऑन लैंड साइड से लैंड वन सिक्योरिटी लेवल हंड्रेड आई पी एड्रेस वन नाइनटी टू वन सिक्सटी नो शर्ट इंटरफेस ई वन डॉट ट्वेंटी विल एंड ट्वेंटी आई पी एड्रेस ट्वेंटी डॉट वन नो शर्ट नेम इफ लैंड टू सिक्योरिटी लेवल हंड्रेड so just check on lan side i also also i did what two sub interface and two lan 10 might be hr 20 might be it i just named them lan 1 and lan 2 you can name hr and it whatever or you can have more i more also you can go on creating sub interface only rule is what whenever you are creating sub interface please map it with If you remember router on a stick, we used to do encapsulation dot one q and then VLAN ID. Encapsulation dot one q and then VLAN ID. But here you don't have to do dot one q because please let me tell you, it is by default dot one q trunking on these two interface and these two. By default is what? ISL is not supported, ah. Huh? So please, whenever you are making trunk, the encapsulation you select is dot one Q. So I did the same thing on this switch. Now I'll do the same thing on this switch also. I have to select dot one Q as the trunking methodology, and not ISL. So here you don't have to give encapsulation dot one Q and then VLAN ID. You can just straight away give VLAN ID. run can be easily negotiated we'll go here on lan switch and we'll enable on e 0 by 1 e 0 by 0 and e 0 by 1 e 0 by 0 and 1 switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q switch port mode trunk see first they when they acha see now they first went down and then they came so when i say show interface trunk they auto automatically negotiated with the asa for trunking and they are now already formed the trunk now i'll create what vlan 10 Name LAN one show VLAN E zero by two and E zero by three. Switch port host. Switch port access VLAN ten. So VLAN. So E zero by two belongs to VLAN ten. E zero by three belongs to VLAN twenty. Let's start this.
give the ip address this fellow is already having an ip address of 10.1 we need to change this fellow's ip address this router's ip address we need to change this router's ip address or this host ip address Twenty dot two ten dot two ten dot one dot thirty dot one ten dot one dot forty dot one ten dot two and twenty dot two. We learn ten and we learn twenty. We learn thirty and we learn forty. Server two, show IP int brief. Config T interface E zero by zero. IP address ten dot one dot forty dot two two five five dot two five five dot zero. No shard. IP default gateway ten dot one dot forty dot one. Server one, config T interface, IP address ten dot one dot thirty dot one two two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Ten dot one dot thirty dot one. So interface IP brief. Ten dot one dot thirty dot two. If it's pinging, that means your VLAN sprung. Everything is okay. It's not pinging, then there's issue. Pinging. So our VLANs, our trunk, everything is working. Then only my traffic is reaching. Respective VLANs. See, okay. Now I'll try to ping one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot one and twenty dot sorry ten dot two. This is R three. So IP int brief interface E zero by zero IP address one ninety two one sixty eight twenty dot two two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero no shut IP default gateway one ninety two one sixty eight twenty dot one this is Land to host. This is land one host. P one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot one. Thinking one ninety two one sixty eight twenty dot one. Thinking. Ping one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot two. Pinging and twenty dot two. That means the trunk and VLAN configuration is perfect. No need to worry. One minute, ah, huh? one minute.
okay so r3 r4 r5 r6 all are pinging 10.1.30.1 now let's see if these hosts can ping each other like for example they are in the same security level if you see show run if you see these two servers or these two lan holes belong in the same security level that means they should communicate with each other without any problem let's see so when i try to ping 192 168 20.2 start pinging when i try to ping 192 168 10.2 it's not pinging when i try to ping 10.1.40.2 it's not pinging when i try to ping 10.1.30.2 that means server 1 and server 2 are not able to ping and same way r3 and r4 is also not able to ping though they are also in the same security level sorry 100 so i need to give one more command here to allow them what is the command on asa same security traffic question mark permit and then when you put a question mark you'll get inter interface Permit communication between different interface with the same security level. Let's see now. Pinging. 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 All are pink. I hope you understood same security level. I hope you understood how to create trunk on switch. No need to create trunk on ASA. By default, it is dot one q encapsulation method. You can go on creating sub interfaces of physical interfaces. Same like router on a stick. Because you will be having internally many LANs. You might be having many servers. Any question regarding this? You can. Uh, thank you. Somebody was telling good session. It's YAT 164. Just, you, just write your proper name so that I can spell it properly. Uh, exact name instead of yacht 164 so i hope uh, you understood how to create vlans in this simple example i try to show you that i created two vlans 30 and 40 i created trunks i created two vlans just an example where i show see trunking is very important because why you need trunk because this interface is going to carry more than one vlan information that's why it is necessary to make trunk. Same way, this interface is going to carry more than one inform VLAN information. So it is necessary to create trunk. When you create trunk, you have to specify the encapsulation. That is the frame tagging method. Frame tagging is important because switch has to tag the frame before sending it on the trunk links. This is the mandatory requirement. This is switching part. Whenever the frame has to be sent on the trunk link, it has to be tagged. So there are two methodologies for tagging. One is 
ISL, which is inter switch link Cisco's proprietary. But the only drawback with Cisco's proprietary is you need to have Cisco devices on both the end to support ISL tagging. But in our case, all our Cisco, so no issue. But ISL tagging is not good in terms of because it it increases the frame size because it gives a tag of bytes which are more like you know normally we have one five one two MTU sizes of the frame default but it gives a thirty byte tag so if it is one five one two tag. Sorry, one five one two frame size, MTU size, and if you put thirty bytes more, it become one five four two size of the normal frame. And many times, some switches drop this frame, treating it as jumbo frames, jumbo frames, because the size of the frame has increased. Like for example, if you are sending a courier to your brother, you are sending some mobile phone, and they are telling you that if it is Say one kg, we'll charge you some ten dollar. But if it increases, then we are going to charge you twenty dollar. Like if you it increases ten grams also above one kg, we are going to charge you double twenty dollars. So you are a you you know that it is going to be one kg only. But when you when you took it and when you you know gave the courier company and when they wait they say no sorry. It is one kg and ten grams. So you said, how come? So whatever envelope you have wrapped on the mobile phone is having weight. So just because of that weight, what happened? Your charges are double. So here also, ISL is giving extra weightage to the frame because of its tagging method. And when you talk about dot one Q, dot one Q is open standard. And the bytes are four bytes only, and that also squeezed on the frame. So the size of the frame is also very less. One five one two plus four bytes. That is one five one six. So people prefer dot one Q because it support native VLAN. The overhead is also less. Frames are not treated as jumbo frame, and secondly, it is an open standard. So Cisco also recommends dot one Q. So ASA supports dot one Q frame tagging method by default. Only one tagging method, but switches support both. So you have to be very careful while configuring trunk, and you don't have to configure anything on the ASA when you when you say VLAN thirty. That's enough. VLAN ten. That's enough. VLAN ID. So it is same similar to router on a stick fundamentals. You can go on creating sub interfaces, okay? But see, don't forget to configure trunk and VLANs on the switches. Don't configure, don't forget to configure proper VLANs on the ASA also. Then only your connectivity. Now let's see one example, one lab that people are looking to access this servers from outside. So we'll make an access list. Okay. Say outside access. We'll make one more access list. Let's not use the same one. And then I said TCP. I want anybody should come on these servers like ten dot one dot thirty dot. to for http that is 80 same for 40.2 also and then i want telnet traffic also telnet traffic also then i want ICMP traffic also.
for both so you see in this access list what i did i try to allow the traffic from outside that is any on server which belongs to vlan 30 and vlan 40 i allowed tcp traffic of 80 and 23 and i also allowed icmp for both the servers and then i applied this in interface outside so when i say show access list i can see there are hit counts 0 0 outside access now i go on r7 but first i need to check telnet is configured so i said enable secret sorry enable password cisco okay already there so when i say show run okay server is already configured for telnet this is not configured so i say enable secret cisco line bty 04 password cisco transport input telnet nssl so i just did i have to do telnet to 10.1.30.2 now what happened let's see there is no route with r1 so ip route there is only route for 10 and 20 so my traffic will not go so i need to make a route 10.1.30.0 255.255.255.0 to and the next stop is firewall for 40 also and for 20 also okay so just because routing was not there my connectivity is not there now let's see cisco so i got connected to let's see on asa show connection detail so u i o b u means up i means inbound o means outbound b means connection initiated initial sync from outside so access list so there is a hit count here for the telnet session of 30.2 good so you see outside traffic can easily visit those servers now there is a hit count for 40 for telnet session that means vlan 30 and vlan 40 is working fine for outside users also not only asa can access even people from outside can also easily come on vlan 30 and vlan 40 and you can see the connection detail is there for public servers also we are still not done nat topic so when we do in the next lecture nat traffic nat we will understand that people will not come on this private ip addresses
people will come only on public addresses but still we have not configured net so they can easily come on tender and then then we no need to put routes also private networks routes you can see the connection is still active you can also oh we can also start pinging these two servers just wait because if we put enter it's again going to create some issue so show sure run when i go here on say who it's already connected ping 10.1.30.2 can users do telnet 10.1.30.2 yes users can also do telnet to the servers because they are going to come from high security level 10.1.30.2 show c o n n detail u i o u means up i mean inbound o means outbound outbound data i told you know whenever you have some open port so that means it is a source and destination is always recognize port number somebody is doing telnet so in this sheet example is given i will change according to our, what we did today and send you so we over redundant interface and vlan so next lecture will start with nat okay now we can start nat though i started little late some issue with the rack it's not getting started so we'll meet on monday i hope you understood if you have any question you can ask me all of you good session okay agility is no no on mixed vendors right on the network hello uh you ask me sgt is no no on mixed vendors right yes that's that's a question yeah sgt means i didn't get you uh your sg tagging when you doing sg tagging as you okay. said before that you cannot have mixed environment uh, on the network it must be only cisco okay. or should can i do it as well in uh, mixed environments okay yes i i talk i told you about the isl tagging that is inter switch link tagging hello yes what about sg tagging can i do it on the mixed environment or should be only be cisco devices only uh i think you can do it i need to just check it out about the sg tagging but at least isl will not work okay, okay. i'll tell you about sg tagging okay okay cool right. but then for trunking and all people go for dot one queue because of less overhead first thing secondly it support native vlan and thirdly it's uh, supporting open vendors the main reason is the tagging 
and secondly when they came out with voice over ip dot one q tagging was important to support uh, voice vlans dot one q support voice vlan isl was not supporting voice vlan so for me two three reason they said let's have dot one q tagging 802 dot one q tagging which is a mixed vendor tagging okay less overhead that is four bytes i told you know and four bytes not with separately it's squeezed inside the frame and secondly it support voice vlans thirdly it's uh, open vendor like open mix environment about sgt i will tell you okay thank you all of you i hope you understood today's lecture of redundant interface and vlan thank you very much good night have a nice day happy weekend